Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at the Hover Bar Duo. This is a phone or tablet stand that can be articulated in a whole bunch of different ways. And it works like you would expect it to work. It sits on your desk here with a nice base to it. But you also have the option of removing the arm from the base and attaching this clamp, which allows you to mount it upside down or on the side of a desk. And that is why they call it the Duo but it's easier said than implemented. And we're gonna take a closer look at this in just a second, but I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this stand is all about. Now the price point on this is about $70. They are marketing it primarily at iPad users, but it will work with any tablet out there. The maximum size it supports is a 12-inch iPad Pro. That includes even the first-generation 12-inch iPad Pro. So I think most tablets on the market are going to fit in here. And I would probably include portable displays in that as well, provided it fits within that form factor. Now, the uh, mounting mechanism here is pretty easy to work with. It's one of these grippers like you've probably seen on other things out there. And depending on the size of your iPad, you'll have to mount it in a certain way. So for example, I've got my 10.5 inch iPad Pro here. I can't mount it uh, horizontally, but it definitely fits here vertically. And then of course you can turn it around to get it into the right position. Uh, you can also mount an iPad mini in either orientation. So I can go vertical here or uh, flip it around and go into the horizontal. On my phone, it supports phones. Uh, the iPhone uh, 13s work with it. Everything from the 6S up will fit. But phones are a little more complicated, so you do have to mount them like so. And the issue you run into is that it covers up the cameras here. So you have to position your phone in such a way that it is just on the edge of being uh, flipped out of, the, uh, out of the gripper here. And with the iPhone 13 Pros that have the wide-angle lens, you got to get it really high to keep the edge of the clamp here out of the picture. So I would have liked for them to have thought about this a little more carefully. They do show it in their marketing, but it's really got to be right on the edge of getting tossed out before it is able to deliver an image without anything in the way there. Uh, the iPads work better because their uh, camera systems are further away from the center, so you're able to work with the camera here uh, without any issues on any size iPad. Now it has a good amount of articulation in the arm system here, and I've got it right now kind of in a desktop computer setup where you can get it uh, positioned nicely for a keyboard and mouse. And as you can see, you've got a lot of range of motion here on the display without having to move the arm at all. Uh, the arm goes pretty far back though, as you can see, but it doesn't have a lot of weight in that base. So if you go too far in any direction, depending on which iPad you have, you will uh, see that uh, base there losing its ability to hold itself on the table. So you will do a little balancing act from time to time depending on what you've got going on. So just be aware of that. Uh, obviously a phone is not going to have as many balancing issues as a larger iPad would. One thing that you will notice, and it's hard to avoid the physics of this, is that things do bounce around a lot. A lot of the motion on your desk is going to get transferred through that arm and you will have a bouncy iPad even if you're just lightly touching your desk. And this is an issue if you are using this to do an overhead shot uh, with the camera, which is one of the use cases that they market. So I would say if you are going to use this for overhead shots, put it on a table other than the one you're working on. Otherwise, all of your motion is going to get transferred right to your camera. Now, my biggest gripe with this is that you have to take out tools to tighten up the arms. They do have a knob here for the a ball joint at the top to tighten things, but for the arms, both the short arm and the longer arm, you have to use two different Allen wrenches to tighten things up. So they have a large one here, which is for uh, the shorter arm. You have to put your Allen wrench in the side there, and then the smaller wrench goes down here at the base, and that's the only way to tighten this up. They don't have any knobs to do it with, which I thought was a bit inelegant. Uh, those Allen wrenches are also how you take the arm off the base and attach it to the clamp mechanism. 
And unfortunately, this is not an easy thing to do. You can't just snap it out and snap it into something else. So you have to flip it over and remove the bottom screw here and then set that aside, lift the base up. You gotta make sure you don't lose the parts that go with the base here because they're not attached in any way. Uh, you put that aside and then you grab the uh, base here and uh, attach it and screw it back in with the same screw. And although you could probably get pretty good at doing this quickly, it's not something that uh, I was expecting because they call this thing the Duo. It's got two different mounting mechanisms and I thought it would be a snap-on, snap-off thing so you could very quickly go from one to the other. That is not the case here. You will be doing a disassembly and reassembly with tools in order to switch out the modes. And I think for something that's marketed as a uh, dual kind of purpose device, this is far from elegant and I do think you will lose parts along the way here. Let me get the clamp here situated at least though and I'll show you how it works when we've got it on the side of the desk. So once you get everything tightened up here, it's really pretty sturdy and you don't have all those balancing issues you had with the base of course. And if you had this up on a shelf, you could get your iPad uh, pointed downwards and do a nice overhead shot if you're looking to grab some video. And of course, if you have it on the shelf, you won't have as much transferred motion as you would if it was on the side of your desk. So it does fine once you get it uh, configured in the way you want to use it, but you have to use tools to get it to that point. So I don't think a lot of people are going to be using the Duo in the Duo product here. And then of course, you've got all these loose parts that'll be kicking around when you are putting one part of it aside. So overall, I am disappointed with this one, although it accomplishes its goal of being both a clamp on and a sit on the desk kind of tablet stand, it doesn't switch between those two use cases very easily. You have to disassemble and reassemble, and then of course you got a lot of loose parts kicking around that you're probably going to lose over the course of time. I'm also unhappy with the fact that you have to use tools to do even basic adjustments on the arms here, and for all those reasons, uh, if you're not going to be uh, using the stand in one way all the time, I think you're going to get frustrated having to constantly take tools out to switch your use case or just make basic adjustments. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Jim Tannis and Tom Albrecht, Hot Sauce and Video Games and Eric's Variety Channel, Brian Parker and Frank Goldman, Amda Brown and Matt Zagaya, and Chris Allegretta. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.